place this morning. If you're ready to worship and you're ready to praise, go ahead and make a praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. I said make a praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Would you worship this morning? Come on, let's put our hands together here this morning.
I don't care people may look at me like I'm crazy because I'm the only person around worshiping but I'm tired I'm tired of having church as usual I'm ready for a move of God I don't care if they think I'm crazy I don't care if they call me a fool I just want a move of God It's time we get fed up with church as usual. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. oh I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Forever I love you Forever I love you Forever Lord Come on, how many of you feel that way? Oh, I love you I love you Forever I love you Forever You first love me, I love you forever. I love you forever. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, say I love you forever. Oh, I love you forever. I love you forever. Come on, this is your chance just to worship. This is your chance just to praise right now. Satisfied. 
oh, cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Say your presence, your presence. Oh, it's heaven to me. feel that way this morning. Oh, I thank you for your presence, Lord. Oh, your presence is heaven. Your presence. Oh, hallelujah. Say your presence is heaven. Your presence.
surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. Oh. of angels things I see glory on each face surely the presence of the Lord is in this place come on can we just sing that song sing surely Anything you need is found in his presence. while the Spirit's here. Why don't you go ahead and raise your hands to the Lord right now. Don't let the Spirit stop. Come on. Let's entertain the Spirit right now. God wants to do something in somebody's life in here today. Somebody's walked into this place carrying a heavy load on their shoulders. Somebody's done everything they know to do in their life and it seems like they're getting pulled down. But I want to tell you today that the presence of the Lord is here. And He is able to do exceeding abundantly above that you can even ask or you can even think. Hallelujah. Somebody in here feel like they're being dragged down. They just want to give up. But I tell you today, don't give up. Don't give up before your miracle happens. Hallelujah. Don't give up just before you get your deliverance. Hallelujah. I don't care what you come in here with today. Whatever you're struggling with, I don't care what it is. Diabetes, suicidal thoughts, I don't care what it is. My God is bigger than that. He is able. I said he is able today. Why don't you reverence him today? Hallelujah. Surely. The Lord is in this place. Surely. You know, we live in a world today that if we're not careful, even us as being saints of God and trying to do our best to live for God, we will get pulled down. It's just the time we live in. Uh, Do I like it? No, I don't like it. Do you like it? No, you probably don't like it. The Apostle Paul said that the spirit of Antichrist was even working even in his day. The spirit of lawlessness. The spirit of rebellion. The Bible said even in Daniel where the Antichrist himself or the spirit of Antichrist would even come to wear out the saints of the Most High. You know, the enemy, if he can, he's not going to tell you there's not a God. He's not going to tell you there's not a heaven. Because you're smarter than that. He himself knows. The Bible said that he believes.
I believe that this valley of dry bones can be taken to represent the spiritual condition of the generation in which you and I live. Modern religion, and if you have not gathered it over the last few months, I'm not a fan of modern religion in America. Modern religion is a valley of dead, dry bones. This generation is spiritually dry. It is barren of the Word and Spirit of God. The spiritual bones of this generation are scattered across the valley of materialism, of lust, and of rebellion. Mankind is adrift in a sea of immorality. The moorings of family values and decency have been denigrated as extremism and fanaticism. Our society has lost its God consciousness. This generation is a confused mess of New Age parapsychology, politically correct nonsense that is exhausting the spiritual strength of the 21st century church. You don't have to say amen, but it's still true. These dry bones in this passage of Scripture represents God's people. The prophet said it was the whole house of Israel, which is a type of the New Testament church. I'm telling you that the modern American church is a jumbled up mess of dry bones that are adrift in a valley of religious deceit and man-made doctrines. Amen. The dead, dry bones of the church are being parched by the white-hot pressure of the new age that we live in. I found that the Hebrew word for dry as used in Ezekiel chapter number 37 The Hebrew word for dry comes from a root word, the word yabesh, which means to wither, to be disappointed, to be confused, to be ashamed. There are many Christians in this religious valley of dry bones, and they're there for multiple reasons. Some have simply dried up and withered away. They've grown increasingly dehydrated in their soul over time. They have failed to water their spirit with the water of the Word and with fresh anointing. Many in this generation find themselves so barren that they feel as if they cannot get that close, powerful anointing back in their life. And they find themselves drying up and withering away, slowly but surely losing out in their walk with God. Still others have found that they are disappointed somehow in life. It didn't turn out like they thought it would. Their their family isn't how they had hoped it would be. Somehow, someone let them down. Maybe God didn't do what you wanted, when you wanted, how you wanted. And you're disappointed in life, disappointed in people, and disappointed in God. And now you feel as if you are in a valley of dry bones. Still others are confused. Now, remember the word dry means to wither, to be disappointed, to be confused, or to be ashamed. And the Bible said in the valley there were dry bones, and lo, they were very dry. Some people, their soul has dried because they are confused. Their minds are so filled with the doctrines of our generation and the wisdom of the world that they are unable to decipher the truth from lies. They were raised one way, but the doctrines of this generation have corroded their spiritual assurance and their soul is dry because they're confused. They don't know what they believe. They don't know what the truth is because they have allowed the world's ideas and man's religious ideas to confuse their spiritual understanding. And they're in a valley of dry bones. 
Some, still others are ashamed. They have beaten themselves up so many times over their sins, over their failures, that they, are una- they feel like they're unable to recover. They have let themselves drift so far from God. Their decisions that, are, that were not rooted in the wisdom of the Word and Spirit has dr- caused them to drift so far from God and the devil has beaten their spiritual confidence out of them. Many people today believe that they so totally deserve whatever happens in their life. I have sat and counseled with folks that you try to convince them that God has a better life for them, but they believe they deserve to be miserable. They deserve to be miserable because they're embarrassed and ashamed and they're afraid. They don't even feel like they deserve to ask God to help them put their lives back together because shame has so bombarded their mind. It's as if they're trying to make penance for their sins by remaining miserable when God never told them to be miserable. God told them to repent and come back. But in their mind, they deserve everything that they get. I'm preaching today about a valley of dry bones, about people who have allowed their walk with God to simply wither away because they're disappointed with how something turned out, because they're confused with false doctrine and ashamed of how they've lived. However you got in the valley, however someone may have gotten in the valley of dry bones uh, is immaterial to the point of this message. How you got in the valley of bones does not matter. The fact is that there is hope for every dried and withered soul that's in the valley of bones this morning. Hallelujah. I will tell you that people are weary of the valley of dry bones. People are weary of being dry and lost. Uh, There's people in this generation uh, that they have no idea why they're where they are and how miserable they are. Nobody ever told them that they could have the Holy Ghost and have joy unspeakable and full of glory. I've come today to boldly declare that you do not have to remain in a valley of dry bones, but there is hope, there is joy, there is peace for your spirit. But you have to get up out of that valley and you have to let the Holy Ghost do a work in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, 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 look, I, I was not left with a whole lot of time this morning. So I'm, going, I'm trying to preach as fast as I can. But if you don't help me fast, I can't preach fast. So if you want me to preach fast, you got to help fast. And you're not helping as fast as I'm preaching. Amen. I'm telling you that it is a valley of dry bones. This generation has tried everything it can to remedy their own problems, to fix their own life, to put their own self back together. But they find that no matter how much they get, they're still unhappy. No matter how hard they try, they're still unfulfilled. I'm telling you this world cannot satisfy your soul. The things of this world will never make you happy. It comes only from the peace of God and knowing that it's God that picks us up out of the valley. It's God that puts us back together. It's God that rebuilds our life. You may feel scattered across this generation, but God can bring your life back together. nothing attractive about dry bones I, 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 I had several months ago I, I made a, a mention in a message that if anybody knew about where I could get a donkey's jawbone let me know and, and brother Paul Patterson had a friend I think who had a donkey to die he got the head and buried it He put it down where nothing could get to it, but something did. Uh, Coyotes or something drug off my donkey's jawbone. Scattered it from Dan to Beersheba. So, so I, I, I've been, I've been waiting on somebody's donkey to die, not, 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 not the gray's donkey to die, somebody else's donkey to die. And, uh, 
and, and it, nothing did. So I went online and I bought a donkey's jawbone. And I, it's actually sitting in, I got it on my office. There's not a thing attractive about a donkey's jawbone. It's not at all how I imagined it. You know, I, it's not at all how I saw it in my mind. And, and I always thought when, when I thought, I saw, run and get it, somebody. Who, who's fat? You know where it's at? Run and get it. My God, it's the ugliest thing I ever saw. It's not at all how I imagined it. But I'm going to tell you there is nothing attractive about dead, dry bones. And I'm also going to tell you that spiritually, there's nothing attractive about dead, dry bones. This world will take every bit of life from you that it possibly can. It will take everything it can out of your life. And it will leave you a pile of dry bones. The world promises you everything. And by the time it's said and done, it leaves you a broken, jumbled up mess. It's not attractive, is it? Is that, how, is that Now, those of you who have had donkeys and stuff like that, you probably know. But this ain't at all how I imagined it. I can just imagine swinging this thing, killing a thousand Philistines. But... Uh, but, but look, the Bible said that they were scattered across the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. There's nothing attractive about dry bones. But I'm going to tell you that if the dry bones can ever become used and touched by God again... There is a use. Whoever would have looked in an open valley and saw a donkey's jawbone and said, you know what, that looks like an instrument of victory to me. But Samson standing in the valley being rushed by a thousand Philistines looked down and saw a donkey's jawbone. And when he picked it up, it became a weapon in the hand of an anointed person. And may I tell you that no matter how dead and dried up your life may seem, that if you can get your life in the hand of an anointed man of God, God can begin to use you. I'm telling you, there is still hope. There is still hope. There is still hope for your dry bones. You may feel withered up. You may feel dried up. But there's hope for your dry bones. Maybe you've been disappointed by somebody. Maybe you're confused. Maybe you're ashamed. Maybe you've just sat on a pew and allowed yourself to wither away. But I've come to tell you, there is still hope for the dead dry bones in your life that God wants to bring your life back together. But we got to deal with our dry bones. This generation has tried its best to remedy all of its own problems. God said to Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? I can just imagine Ezekiel standing out there in that valley of dry bones, scratching his head, rubbing his chin, and thinking, I know what he was thinking. He was thinking, my Lord, no. But he knew that God was, wouldn't be asking if there wasn't hope. Let me tell somebody, God doesn't just throw questions out there. When God said, can these bones live? It's because God was raising a subject. Because God wanted to do something about it. Let me tell you that God would not have given me this message to preach this morning if there wasn't somebody that felt dried up in this place today that he wanted to touch. And maybe you are what, sitting there thinking, I'll never get back. I'll never get again. I'll never feel fresh anointing. I'm telling you that is a lie from the devil because if God didn't want to touch you with fresh anointing, he wouldn't have sent a man of God to a pulpit today to tell you that there is hope in dealing with dry bones, that there is life for the scattered dry bones of your life you may be scattered across the valley of this generation but God is wanting to bring bone together to his bone there is hope there is life and God wants you to know I've had people I've had people that they've come to me and if you were to ask me in my flesh if you were to ask me according to my own human understanding do you think they'll ever make a good saint I would have had to, I'd have scratched my head, I'd have rubbed my chin, I'd have tried, I'd have stood there and, and, and fidgeted a while, trying my best to, to, to come up with a good answer. And Ezekiel finally said, you know what, uh, uh, my, my, uh, uh, God, you know, I, I, I don't have any idea. Which was Ezekiel's nice way of saying, are you kidding me? Look at them, they're a mess. I mean, they're scattered all over the place. 
their, their, their life's a mess. Uh, there's a piece of it over here and a piece over here and a piece over here and a piece over there. How will it ever get put back together? But Ezekiel copped out and he said, Lord, thou knowest. Uh, there's been people that I've seen uh, and, I've, and, 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 so, and God has, t- you think they'll ever make a good saint? And I've looked at their life, how they've been addicted to this uh, and they've done this uh, and they've been over here and they've messed up here and I'm looking all around at the dry bones uh, and I'm thinking they'll never come back together. But you know what? I just had to stand back and say, God, you're the one that can heal it. I can't. I don't know, but God, you're the one that can bring it together and I can't do it. Could you imagine if Ezekiel, let, let's just think about Ezekiel with a great army, hundreds of of people at least, uh, of, of bones. Uh, how many bones are in the human body? 204? 206? What? Somebody in, in that took, took anatomy recently, and one, one of you medical folks, it's, about, it's a little over 200, isn't it? I can't even get a good Baptist nod at anybody. 206? We'll go with 206. And let, and let hey, yeah, the, let's auction it off. The highest bidder can get have as many bones as you want. I got one. And it's very dry. 206. What constitutes an army? Wait, what, what, let's, let, what would be the minimum number of soldiers you could have in called an army? 100? All right. Huh? 100, okay, 100 times 206. That's what? 2,600 bones? Something like that? Right? All right. Now, now let's think about Ezekiel in a valley with at least, huh? I don't, I, my math may have been wrong. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to do math in front of 200 some people. 20, let's just say 2,600 bones or so. Two, over 2,000 bones. And Ezekiel's out there, and he's got to get all these bones put back together right where they belong. He's got to, first of all, he's got to find them in the desert, bleached by the sun, blending in with the surroundings. He's got to find every little, you know, the, the, the big bones. Some of you got jaw bones like this because I've heard you talk about folks before. Well, that's a different method. Don't get mad at me on that one. But there's other bones that are so small. And you've got to dig those out of the rocks and the pebbles and the sand. And Ezekiel's got to be out there and at least over 2,000 bones he's got to bring together. Some of them are broken so you take some of those broken pieces and you, you say, well, then that's more pieces he's got to put together. And he's got to find all the little ones and he's got to lay them out. But that's not good enough because the Bible said it's bone to his bone. So he can't take, he can't take one of my, he can't take my, my, my tibia with somebody else's fibula. And he can't take my femur with somebody else's uh, 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 radius and ulna and, and, and patella. You didn't know I knew all that stuff. I'm get, I don't know which is which, but I know they're all in there. And he, he can't, you know, he can't take he can't take my little finger, and your pointing finger, and your other finger you don't point, and 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 make a hand out of it. It's got to be bone to his bone. Well, how's he going to figure that out? They all look the same after they've been bleached out in the sun. How's he going to figure that out? He doesn't have a medical degree, so so what he's going to have to do is he's going to have to advance a few thousand years in history. He's going to have to get a time machine go and he's going to have to get a DNA profiler and you have to go back and do a DNA profile on every bone and match them up so he makes sure that every bone is to his bone and he's going to have to go back in the time what I'm saying is it was impossible for Ezekiel to put them back together and when God said son of man can these bones live he said I have no idea God you have to figure this one out listen I can't figure out every issue in everybody's life I'm not smart enough I don't have the ability but God knows God knows every little piece of your life that's out of place he knows every piece of your life that's been scattered and I'm telling you God knows how to put it back together again oh God Thou knowest. Uh, I don't know how God's going to fix it. I don't know how God's going to put it back together. I don't know how God's going to deal with your shame uh, and deal with your guilt uh, and deal with your false idea and deal with your dryness. I don't know how he's going to deal with your confusion uh, and your disappointment, but I have a word from the Lord. Uh, He said, prophesy, son of man. Uh, You know what my job is? It's just to preach the word of God. 
God, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know what to do. And God says, here's how you do it. You just preach, son of man, preach to the dry bones. And Ezekiel stood out. He must have felt, he must have felt just as crazy as anybody. To stand out there ankle deep in everybody's bones. And start preaching to bones that don't have ears. They don't have brains that can hear it. He said, oh ye dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. I don't see an ear on this dry bone. It doesn't have the nerves that, that catch the sound as it comes off the eardrum that sends it to the brain, that, that makes it decipher what those electrical impulses that are coming off that eardrum mean. It doesn't have an ear to hear. I don't know how Ezekiel ever got himself. I, I'm sure he stood out there and he looked around at the hills to make sure nobody was watching. Because if they see me preaching all these bones, they're going to think I have lost my mind. I'm going to tell you, a preacher can't be worrying about what other people think when he has a word from God. He just has to preach what God gives him. If you're worried about what everybody around says, uh, then people are going to stay dry bones. Uh, they, if Ezekiel would have cared what other people thought, he, they would still be dry bones. Uh, but sometimes you have to step out in the deadness and the dryness and say, hear ye the word of the Lord. Uh, I'm telling you, you need preaching. If your life is going to be put back together, you need to hear the Word of God. It's going to be by the preaching of the Word that your bones are brought back together. We need the Word. I'm going to tell you how to deal with dry bones. I'm going to cut to the chase and get right to the point. You need to be faithful to hear the preached Word of God. When he preached to the dry bones, something supernatural happened. The bones across that valley begin to shake. They begin, I, I, man, I, I couldn't imagine. It was because the Bible said the bones came together. Bone to his bone. I, I saw on the, on the internet that video of, of the tornado that came through Tupelo. There was a video taken by the security camera of the church right off of McCullough and, and Gloucester. There's a, I think we played a ball game back there in there one time. But there's a little playground behind, and there was a security camera. And, and that security camera was running when that tornado came through. And you could watch that as the, it got dark, and the rain started falling, those trees started swaying, and then all of a sudden they just laid down. And everything went chaotic. And then it calmed down for a second, and then chaos broke out again. And then the next thing you know, it's there. And, 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 but but when, when that video is at its worst, and there's stuff... I, 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 was, I was watching it on the internet, and, and I, my, my hands got sweaty. I got thinking about, about that storm and all that. And I, I can imagine what Ezekiel was like when, when he's standing there in the valley with thousands of bones, and he's just standing there preaching. Oh, ye dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. And he's just preaching. And all he's doing is preaching the word of God. He just bringing the book. He just opening it up. I'm gonna tell you. He just preaching. Oh, ye dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones: Behold, I'll cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I'll lay sinews upon you, and flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. Ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. I had a lady I passed in Indiana. Every time I get preaching hard, she'd whistle. Not, not the sissy whistle, like the one of them that I can't do that. Like the, the, like the, 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 the over the sound of the Harley motor whistle. And she let that thing rip. And, and I'd be preaching and I'd hear that thing. And it'd scare me. I didn't know where it was coming from. I'd look. I'd preach a little while longer whistle again and then I realized a little old red headed lady about like this she was rough as rough could be she was just as rough as she could be but when she got the Holy Ghost 
the Holy Ghost got her. And when she got baptized, she got excited, and she didn't care what anybody thought. I had an old starchy guy come to me one time and say, Pastor, do you think it's appropriate to whistle like that in the house of God? You know, when you're, when you're snooty, you draw it out. And, and, and I'm normally very nice, but, but he got on my nerves because I had preached to him for years, and he sat like a bump on a log. He sat there and acted like God wasn't worth nothing, acted like the Word of God wasn't worth anything, acted like, like, like praise didn't matter, and I'd watched him for all these years sit there, and it wasn't here, don't worry, it was in Indiana. I'm talking about Yankee oh, people. And, and, and just act like, like nothing mattered, and it burnt me up when we got a woman that her husband had had a bull, had a gun to his head just a few weeks before and was getting ready to pull his brains out, but he called the phone number and got prayer and came to church, and here she is. She's just glad her husband didn't pull the trigger and blow his own brains out two, three, four weeks ago. And here he is. She, he didn't know that she was on dope and everything else, and their family was messed up until they got the Holy Ghost, and God started bringing bones back together, and God started putting it back together, and you're going to sit over there, and you're going to criticize somebody that found joy unspeakable and full of glory. I said, you know what? Whistling is a lot more appropriate than sitting there like an old dead head that doesn't know that God ever did anything. I'm going to tell you, we need God to put bone back to bone. Uh, and while he was preaching, bones start flying. While he's preaching, I'm going to tell you, while I'm preaching this message, God can begin to bring the bone. He can be pulling things uh, that you thought you'd never see again while the word of God, he said, while I prophesied, bones start flying. I'm going to tell you, in the spirit right now, while we're preaching this message, God can begin to put your life back together. But you got to have the preaching of the word of God. You got to hear the word of the Lord. I'm telling somebody, hear the preached word of God. It will put your life back together. When I preach about praise, I'm not doing it for my health. I'm doing it because God's trying to get a bone in its place. When I preach about holiness, I'm not doing it to show my authority. God's trying to bring a bone back. When I preach about prayer, I'm not just trying to take time out of your busy schedule. I'm tr- God's trying to pull a bone back in place. Hear ye the word of the Lord. It's the preaching of the word of God that caused life to sweep across that valley. Stand with me. I'm, I am exactly halfway through. I am exactly right now, halfway through my notes. Dear God in heaven. Genesis 1 said the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. That phrase, in the original Hebrew, that phrase without form and void... It means confusion, a place of chaos. Can you imagine the confusion of that valley of dry bones? The chaos scattered across the open valley. The earth was without form and void. The earth was in confusion. It was a place of chaos. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Do you ever feel like your life is full of chaos and darkness? feel like you just can't make sense out of anything. It's chaotic. It's confusion. It's darkness. But the Bible said the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God, we need a move of your Spirit here this morning. And God said, word of God spoke into the confusion and the darkness and God said let there be light and there was light preaching brings light to a chaotic dark circumstance in your life dry bones hear the word of the Lord 
every head is bowed and every eye is closed, God, I can't help but feel that there's spiritual dryness in somebody's life. And not everybody that is dry got there for the same reason. Maybe some just let their walk wither away. Maybe still others are confused. They don't really know what they believe. Others are disappointed because things didn't work out like they had hoped, like they thought they would. They're disappointed in the church. They're disappointed in you. They're disappointed in somebody. Disappointed in themselves. Maybe some are just dealing with shame and guilt from bad decisions and bad choices. Whatever the cause of the confusion, whatever the cause of the dry bones. The cause is immaterial to the fact that they're in the valley of dry bones today. God, I have preached as you have commanded. I prophesied as you've said. So God, I believe you're going to start putting bones I hope that the dead dry bones can believe that their life can be reconstructed by the Word of God. I hope that those that feel so dry can somehow get hope to believe that their life can be put back together, Lord, by Your Word. God, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice today would realize that God had a purpose in this message and if they're dry for whatever reason that God is wanting to put their life back together again oh God come on let's pray let's pray all over this place left to right front to back God have your way they're starting to sing they're starting to sing right now as the Holy Ghost is moving why don't you just with your eyes closed why don't you just lift a hand Everybody lift your hand up. We need we need the fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost to move in this place. Oh ye dry bones, hear ye the word. We're dealing with dry bones today. You have an area of your life where you feel dryness. Feel like the bones are dry. There's not much left. Your best friend. Have you been preached to today? While they're singing, if you feel like you've been preached to, I wish you'd step out from where you are and make your way to an altar. Why don't we deal with dry bones today and let the spirit and the hand of God begin to move? Oh God, come on. The Lord, if the Lord was talking to you, you gotta deal with your dry bones. You gotta hear ye the word. Oh, you dry bones, hear ye the word. This could be your moment. This could be your hour. This could be your day. When life comes, when hope comes, 